This is the voice, this is the voice, this is the voice of Radio Free Naruto. Anyhow, I stopped off at a restaurant to get something neat and and had, uh, got a simple vegan dish. And then as I was paying, this person said, You're Gary Noll? I said, Yes. He said, My mother listens to you all the time. And I think that just watching you, you're a little extreme, aren't you? I said, Well, depends upon your perspective. What did you just see that you found <laughs> excessive? Well, you sit down and first you take something out and you spray the table and you wipe it down and then you, you took your own utensil out of your pocket. This silverware is fine. And then you, you didn't drink anything. Uh, and uh, uh, isn't that just a little extreme? I said, okay. From your perspective, probably so. But the salad that you're eating there now, how many hands have touched that before it got to your plate? When they're busy downstairs in a restaurant and having owned four restaurants, I can tell you, unless you're there, there's this tendency to pick up something and put it in a bowl instead of washing it. Because when you wash it, you have to do it right. You have to triple wash it, soak and agitate it, then spin it dry. That's not going to happen in most restaurants. People come in at four in the morning. They take open the bat boxes of produce. They cut up the lettuces. They put that lettuce in a sink. They spray it down for a minute and then chop it up and put it into a 55-gallon plastic barrel and label it salad greens. And then the sous chef used that. Now, none of that is thoroughly cleaned. None of it. There's no time for it. Then other people will pick it up with their raw hands, bare hands, and put that up on a table. On that table, you could have cut pork, and which is on the menu here, and uh, chicken, which is on the menu here, and beef on the menu here. All of that can contain E. coli, listeria, and other contaminants that stay on the cutting surface. The person that does cut your salad, or what goes in your salad, is going to use a knife, and you have no idea whether or not that knife was washed in between things used. I'll bet it wasn't. And how many times does a chef stick their finger in a dish and suck their finger and stick their finger right back in again? I see it all the time. Or they'll use a spoon and they'll use the same spoon from their saliva, the saliva in their mouth. Now, if you want to go French kiss the chef and taste the saliva, that's fine. I don't. But uh, when you're eating a soup here, how do you know that that saliva from that chef isn't in there? Because I've, I've never seen any chefs except David Boulay that really practice proper hygiene. I'm sure there are, but I've seen too many who don't. And then, then you have the people who are then putting the salad on your plate and decorating it up. It's not just put, it's put almost always by hand, not people with gloves and, uh, and not tongs. That is how you got your salad. So do you understand how many pathogens you could have gotten on there? And those sprouts, do you think they wash those sprouts? Because if you wash sprouts, they're going to go limp. They're going to look bad. They're going to go moldy real quick. I'll bet anything those sprouts are not washed. And gee whiz, didn't we just have a lot of people die over in Europe because of contaminated sprouts? You have to know how to wash sprouts and then spin them. And uh, so there could be up to 24 hands touch your produce before you eat it. So that's why I didn't have a salad. I had brown rice. I had, uh, I had uh, sauteed tofu with broccoli and olive oil and mustard, and lots of mustard, because mustard is a healing. Mustard is one of nature's most perfect healing foods. Simple, all right, just like cayenne. I like them both together. Now, why did I clean the table? I'll say, look behind us. Do you see that those people just got up? Look at the uh, uh, server. He's going over there taking a dirty towel that's got all of the debris the spittle from people's mouths, someone who could have sneezed on the table, someone who could have come in here with hepatitis or herpes and anything else, and now that's on the tabletop, and he's wiping that off with the same towel. There's no disinfectant, there's no alcohol, there's no hydrogen peroxide. So I simply bring in a little tiny bottle of hydrogen peroxide mixed with alcohol, 
and I spread on the table, and I take a napkin, and I wipe it. So the surface area that I'm going to rest my hands, I don't want to get a SARS infection on my arms, just like in the movie theater. I'm going to go to a movie theater in a little bit. I'll enjoy a movie. But you won't see, and nobody will see, that I simply put down a simple paper towel where I'm resting my thing. Is that fanatical? By your concept, yes. By mine, no. It doesn't interfere with what I'm doing. It doesn't make a scene. Now, why didn't I drink water? Two reasons. A, that water, the glass, wasn't sterilized. I didn't see it sterilized. The silver wasn't sterilized. Now, look at the person putting down the new silverware right at the table beside us. He's putting down the fork and the spoon using his fingers. The same fingers he could have picked his nose or stuck uh, in, in his mouth or his ears or wiped his eyes or gone to the bathroom and defecated. Now, do you want his defecation? Do you want his feces on your fork? Now, maybe you do. I don't know. I don't, do you live on the east side, the west side of the village? You know, what do I know from you? All I'm telling you is you think I'm a fanatic because I brought my own silverware. At least my silverware won't have anyone's feces on it. But I can't promise yours won't. So the water you drank, it's fluoridated water. And also, I don't drink with a meal because it, it dilutes my digestive acids. So I want full benefit of my digestion. The meal itself was tasty. I enjoyed it. I took my time. I relaxed. And I made no fuss about anything. I asked no one for anything. But you watching this, it kind of puts you in a you know, strange frame of mind that I'm an eccentric. Maybe by your concepts, but it's an even flow. Now ask me the last time I was sick. And I'll tell you, I don't remember. Not because I'm senile. Flu, cold, aches, pains, traveling 100,000 miles a year, going to countries where you would be dead in a week from amoebic dysentery. Why am I not sick? Maybe because I actually practice some simple hygiene principles. The average American touches their mouth over 3,000 times a day. Just imagine what you can spread on doorknobs, on money. Why do I believe clove oil should be in your cabinet? For a couple reasons. First, because clove oil is one of nature's most perfect antioxidants. And it's not that you drink clove oil, it's just that it can protect and it has a capacity to be measured in cloves, not the oil, but in the actual clove, in high ORAC, which is oxygen radical absorption capacity, meaning it traps free radicals. And uh, in fact, ORAC from cloves uh, soars to over 10 million. It's um, most of their antioxidant rated in the, in the thousands. So it's just phenomenal. It's in, a, it's in a universe by itself. And producing the oil from the clove buds concentrates the eugenol, the main active ingredient in cloves. And eugenol is anti-inflammatory. Hence, cloves have flavonoids that contribute high antioxidants and are great if you have fungus, skin fungus, if you have candida. Now, that's not taking it as an oil. That's taking it as a clove powder or clove capsule. It's one of the highest sources of manganese, and manganese is important for your metabolism. It contributes to enzymes. It promotes bone strength and adds to cloves hyoric and it's just great. Antibacterial, you bet, and antiviral also. Now, another thing you could be taking that could help you is called creatine, C-R-E-A-T-I-N-E. -E. It can fight fatty liver disease. And this is a new study from the Journal of Nutrition. And they found that uh, creatine was extremely important, not just for athletes who are uh, needing it because it maintains muscle mass, and especially for men over 50, it helps maintain muscle mass so you don't get the fat build up. But, quote, talked about in this study, the, uh, this is from the University of Newfoundland. The proceeding was brought to you by the makers at Golematic. Bright lies for dark truths.